Inside of this enclosure, I have a bunch of Hysterocrates Gigas babies. There should be like 50-ish inside for sure. There is just a couple of, and if I move the cork bark, they are kind of starting to come outside. So yeah, it is time finally to build a big enclosure for them, a glass enclosure that is. And I think that I already shared on the video how I will build that new enclosure, what will be the basic principle, but in case you missed it, let me do a quick recap. So we know this is also a communal setup, this is a setup that houses uh, Monocentropus balfouris, and the plan is to right under that setup to have uh, Hysterocrates gigas also communal setup. Therefore, uh, the two communal setups will be one on each other. This one, uh, this enclosure is not super heavy. It is made out of glass, which got its own weight. And also there is that wood piece inside, which, which also got a certain weight, but there is not a lot of substrate. And therefore, uh, also this is a kind of dry setup. So uh, there is not a lot of weight from watering that substrate. So basically the weight that the enclosure actually got now, it, it will be the, the actual weight in any certain time. And that is important because this entire enclosure will be resting on top of the Balfouri, I mean not Balfouri, the Hysterocrates Gigas enclosure. And therefore, I'm hoping that the, the Hysterocrates Gigas enclosure, the new enclosure that we are going to build today, it will be capable enough to hold the weight of this enclosure. I'm pretty sure that that's the case, but until we actually try it out and put this enclosure on the new enclosure, we won't know for sure. And also in the same time, I want to get rid of this stand and actually replace it with smaller stand and the one that will be made from this same material. So it will fit the, the entire place a bit better than this current thing. And also it will be a bit lower. So the entire construction won't be too high. You know, that's the idea. Yeah. So firstly, let's uh, connect the first two glass pieces. The, the bottom and top, no, the bottom and back. And then while that is curing, we are going to build that stand because I already got, got all the materials. They are right here. You see right here. And here are all the glass panels that we need. These and couple of these. Rest of the glass panels are intended for two of the enclosures of this size, but with this type of door mechanism. So yeah, also the new Hysterocrates Gigas enclosure will have uh, this type of door mechanism, but uh, there is one issue. You see, this one actually works perfectly. See, you just lift it up and it is locked in place. But uh, this, you see, I have duct tape right here and yeah, that is the only place because the actual plastic pin that enables door to go up and turn it actually broke off, you see, it is something like, you see this thing, because when you lift the door, you see it goes like that, and that enables the door to open, yeah. And actually that plastic pin is the weak spot of this whole system, and therefore I will be trying to make it a little bit more robust so it doesn't break as easily as it did on this enclosure. And also, you know, I have the same mechanism on leopard geckos on Thor's enclosure, and that also broke in the same manner as uh, these doors. While on these smaller enclosures, I actually have the like final design and the mechanism is basically identical, but 
uh, this plastic pin is kind of bigger, kind of fatter than on, on previous enclosure. Uh, this was actually improved version because I noticed that they are breaking really easily. So uh, I improved it here, but I made these doors, uh, this system, I made it before that one. So therefore that one is weaker than this one, even though this one is much smaller and don't actually need that strength as the one on that enclosure. But yeah, enough of technicalities and let's actually start building the enclosure. So as I already said it a million times, it all starts with silicone and bottom and back panel. Firstly, we are going to silicone these two. Of course, I won't be going through the whole process in detail because as I said, I did it a million times, but I definitely need to make an updated version of how to make a glass enclosure because I feel that the original video that I did in my in my apartment like four years ago is kind of outdated. It is old for sure. I mean the technical aspect of the video is all right but the quality is a bit lower than it is now. So that is also something that you can expect in the future, in the near future, I think. You can do this without uh, a rig like this, the 90 degrees angle that I did for myself. You can do it without it, you just need a wall or something like that. But this definitely makes it a bit easier. Okay, now as the thing is curing, let's make a stand. And that is also another complicated thing. From tools, you are going to need a drill with a drill bit, of course. You are going to need an impact driver. Actually, you don't need it, but this makes screwing screws far easier than just with this. But you can do everything with this. Also, you need a measuring thingy, you need a pencil, and you need screws for furniture. In particular, these are screws made for a particle board because you know I am mostly using a particle board. And also, I will be using uh, this. This is a jig for drilling holes because with this, you don't really need to measure. You just put it like this and you are drilling hole that is an exact spot in order for it to connect to the other board like this, you know? Super easy stuff, you know? I need you. Set it here and let's get down to business. This is going to be the base, you see? You see, that's the base idea. And then on top you put this. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you just need to connect this and that's an easy peasy lemon squeezy. I will start by making holes on both sides here, 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 so I can connect with the other board. With this done, let's connect the first part. Now to do this four more times. Now with this box being created, you see, we need to cover these screws with little stickers to make it look a bit prettier. And then we are going to screw the base. Easy, right? Firstly, I am going to mark where I will drill the holes and I am doing that by just placing it simply in the middle and then marking it with a pencil. Now, you see, I just drill in the middle of these markings and that's it. Oof, I didn't mark a spot here. So I guess I will just lack one screw. It doesn't really matter. And that's it, the stand is done, you see? All nice. Now we can do a time jump and as these two panels are connected, we can apply more silicone on these sides and connect the left side of the enclosure. And also, as you can see on the right of me, Felix are paying us a visit. I mean, Felix is paying us a visit. Man, English, I'm still struggling with it. What is up, dude? You think you are getting a roach? Well, not really, because you already got your roaches for today, okay? Now the tricky part, to align everything and not get your fingers covered with silicone. There we go, all done. But I forgot to take something heavy. And the drill will do for now. Now another time jump and you see I already flipped it. And to do the same thing with the right side. Yeah. Are you guys enjoying this? Uh, honestly, I'm highly doubting. But then again, who knows how many of you want to do an enclosure for themselves. So everything that you see and remember can help you later. There, now two more time jumps or 
three. I don't know, we will see. Jump now to flip the enclosure on its right side and silicone the final piece because off camera I actually added the front panel. You see, this is this smaller part. This is where the, the door will come, but first we need to do the, the top part. So one quick turn around and actually the enclosure is not that heavy. I was thinking that it will be heavier, but it's all right. And now I need to apply the silicone on the entire edge because this whole top section will be silicone. And this is actually the first enclosure that I'm going to do like this because you know my every enclosure got the top lid that is actually removable. Uh, it makes access to the enclosure significantly easier and therefore the maintenance is easier. But since we will have this enclosure on top of this one, we need to have a fixed top lid. But uh, of course I want to be able to remove this enclosure from this and still uh, this enclosure to be closed off. So I cannot just put the, this enclosure on top. That wouldn't be wise. So, you know, silicone. Excellent, now final siliconing time. Jump and voila, the glass section of this enclosure is finished. Also off camera, I added this thing, you see this glass panel, because the door will be, uh, I mean, once I put the door over there, you will see why. I have this right there and also it is slightly pushed inside and there is a good reason you will see that once I will be installing the door section. But now with this complete, with glass part complete, we can actually test it out and see if this enclosure will be holding this enclosure. Only one way to actually figure it out and that is by placing the enclosure one on each other. So let's do that. Firstly, I want to move this one out of the way so I can put this on the desired spot. Now, I'm not really sure if I want to keep these pads under that I have under the enclosure. I don't know if it's smart to have weight centered on a few spots. It would be better if the weight of the enclosure would be spread equally through entire side. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to remove those, those feet that I have under the enclosure. Let me show you. You see, this is what I'm talking about. I need to remove this. I'm gonna use the scalpel for this operation because they're actually holding really well. One down. And the last one. Now to put you back on the stand here and let's see if this works. Okay, so far so good. Oh no, the light turned off. Thankfully it wasn't as I was carrying the enclosure, but it was really close. So that means that currently it is 8 p.m. here. Nice, I dig this. This is now starting to be a really cool central piece, right? Mm -mm -mm. It will be tricky to light this enclosure, but I guess I can put something on batteries and turn it on just for special occasions. And also for this enclosure, I can just drop some sort of line with a one stationary light right here to light this enclosure. And then when I turn off the lights, it should look really cool. Now another time jump and now I 3D printed the parts you see. These are for ventilation, the bottom part, and these are the things that go on the actual door. Uh, I still need to see if they are actually if they actually work, but I can try that only when I assemble everything. Uh, but now I remember that I forgot one important thing, and that is ventilation. You see, right underneath the door, I have the ventilation right there. You see, which is really good. Uh, that is something like you see. This entire section provides ventilation, but in order to ventilation work correctly, you need to have a cross ventilation, and that means. On top, you see, I also have holes and that enables the enclosure to cross ventilate, like the, the hot air will go out from there and the cold air will go through these front holes inside. And unfortunately, I forgot the fact that I have the top closed off, so I don't really have any form of ventilation besides that front gap that we will have. So that is definitely not acceptable. Therefore, I need to make holes here four holes and fit in these circular ventilation pieces that I already painted black. And then I remember that the, the same one I have on this enclosure, on top lid of the Balfouris enclosure, but it is white and I should definitely 
paint this black so it matches everything, the environment in the dark den. So now, a while ago I tried to drill the glass in order to fit this type of ventilation and it worked, but it was on a really thin piece of glass and it was, I don't know, just a standalone piece of glass that I could drill easily. Now on a finished enclosure I never try to drill something like this and something as thick because this is 5 mm thick but regardless I need to do it and hopefully I won't shatter the glass. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> First I will need to flip the enclosure. That is also the reason why I didn't want to install the door system because uh, I need to flip it on the front side where the door will be and with doors in place I think that that would be kind of problematic. So let me flip that. That was easy. Now to measure where to drill the holes, right? So I need them to go like right here. One, two, three, four. Where is the middle? Here, if I measure that correctly, that should be all right. Okay, everything is marked. Now to figure out if I can do this. Mm, I should probably tape something underneath so it doesn't fall down, right? But the problem is the only entrance is on the bottom, so I need to flip it once again. Ugh. This is starting to be a bit tedious. Now let's drill. Oh, one down. Okay, I like this. Now will this fit? That's the question. Yeah, it will. Excellent. We can proceed now. Excellent. This went honestly surprisingly well. So I just quickly clean this up. And now to add the ventilation circles, I will just use silicone to kind of hold it in place even though the the friction between metal and glass would hold it at its place but still i want to secure it a bit more with silicone there we go i did mess up a bit with you will see now for some reason the glass shattered here and here you see maybe because as i was this was the third hole, so I was pressing more and more each hole. So maybe I, I pressed a bit too much when drilling this one. But still, it doesn't matter because you see, it looks all right. It is barely visible, right? Now, let's see if the door will actually work. <laughs> the question is, did I plan and measure everything? That is the real question. If everything will fit all right. Um, to connect all the plastic panels with the glass, I'm using this Mm, two component glue, it is called. Oof, damn, I got it on my pants. Anyhow, I'm using this epoxy resin, you see? Yeah, it is the only thing that so far I found that holds, that connects the PLA plastic with the glass. There is probably other stuff on the market, but this is the only thing that I tested and it, that it works. I actually only have a few minutes before it starts to harden, so I need to work fast. Off camera I assembled a left door and this is how it looks. You see, I have these two pins and the bottom one goes into here. While the top one will be held in place with this thingy. But first I need to connect that. I need to glue it once again with this epoxy resin. And it's complete. Wanna see how it opens for the first time? Ta-da! The only problem is I need to open both doors simultaneously because uh, this door panel I glued it a bit further back so if I close it off first then this one really doesn't fit I need to do it like <laughs> it always needs to be something and not working like perfectly but okay it works it works at least that now we are ready to set up this enclosure and for that I already have the central piece are you freaking kidding me okay i guess this wasn't cured enough because it ah oh, setbacks setbacks but i can fix that i can print new part because you see this broke 
<sighs> Let's set up the enclosure regardless. And then I will print this part once again and re-glue this and then everything should work. And at least now I know what I need to be looking out for. I need to redesign this. This is just not enough, not strong enough. That means that there will be another time jump, but I will make it work. Yeah, for sure. If stuff like this stops me, I would quit a long time ago. That is for sure. So how I want to place this? Decisions, decisions. Do you want it to face maybe like this? Or I should just push it to the edge like this. Okay, this is definitely the look that I will be going for. Let me just see how it will look from the other side, from here. Mm. Actually, I don't really like how close to the glass is. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we should move it a bit like this and I will support it with the substrate. Yeah, I definitely don't want it to touch the edge of the enclosure. The glass edge because this is a central piece and it, it should be in the middle. The substrate that we are using here is once again the mixture of cocoa fiber potting soil, mm, peat moss and sand. I'm really enjoying the look of it, but we will see how it will perform uh, over the time. Is this enough or do we need more? Also, I will throw in a couple of cork bark tubes just to provide additional hiding places. They will be just scattered around the area. I also presume that spiders will dig and make tunnels under the cork bark and under the wood and everywhere around. So with all the available space, they should really enjoy this. Yeah, I'm quite sure. The better it dies during the setup, but you see I also added some rocks like there, here and here. I made sure that they are fixated uh, really good so it cannot uh, fall on tarantula and squish someone by accident, but tarantulas can still dig under and around the rocks to make additional hiding places. And I think that this is now complete. I only want to add some leaf litter and branches and then call it a day. Yeah, I think that, that, that this is the look that I, that I like. So I'll put you here once again and randomly scatter leaf around some sand and some random branches. I really like where this is going and how it looks. But now I promise you one final time jump. And now I think that finally everything is done and everything works. I don't want to jinx it, but it seems all right. Uh, I fixed it so I can individually open each door. So you see, door number one, and it actually holds door number two. And it also, for now. Now, the enclosure, the setup. This is the final look and you see I removed the Balfour enclosure just for the time being so the recording of this is a bit easier since I still don't have the light inside fixed. Uh, it, it is kind of dark for recording so therefore I removed the top enclosure so more light comes in. And also the recording will be easier because I will be able to record from the top if necessary. So if we go around the enclosure, this is how it looks from all sides. Pretty good, huh? What you think? Oh yeah! Now, for, for the rehouse, I already prepared everything here and I already prepared the tactic. So uh, this is the enclosure where I keep all the Hysterocatus Gigas slings and I made it so it reaches the entrance and hopefully I will be able to just push them uh, or poke them so they run directly into the new enclosure. At least that is what I'm hoping for. I still have the catch cup and also the smaller cup and all the poking sticks so I can catch the loose slings. But yeah, I think that this will be all right. As you know, I don't really know how many uh, Hysterocatus Gigas slings are inside. And during the rehouse, what I learned from last time, I cannot really count because I am focused on trying to catch all the slings. So therefore I will be recording it and I will just count them once I will be editing this video. So without any further ado, let's do this. I will start by lifting one cord bark and that is exposing a couple of slings. You see down there. Honestly, I was expecting more. Now let's see what will happen when I pull this one. Okay, there are some, but hmm. Nothing dramatic. I guess I can start with this one. That was one. And on the cork bark, I don't really think that there is 
Oh, there is one here, you see. Okay. Hmm, this is not looking good. Where is everyone? I sure hope that there is plenty in the tunnels. One here. Number three. Maybe I will actually be able to count if there is not too many. Here is fourth. Yeah, four. Actually, I want to pull this camera a bit closer because I'm not really important in this. I want to record the enclosure. I see a lot of movement in the substrate. Here's one. This is now number five. <laughs> Little bolter. I see sixth. Here he is. Oh, he's kind of fat. Seven. If I can get it out of the cup. Come on, little one. There. There it goes. Another one. Eight. Nine. Ten. So we are one fifth of the way if there is around 50 inside. <laughs> Eleven. 12, <laughs> 13, I'm just throwing them out at this point. Oh, two more, but they bolted. I was too slow for them. It would be 14, right? And 15, <laughs> 16. Oh, look, this one is freshly molted. Number 17, 18, and lucky 20, here it is. 20. This definitely now looks a bit more promising. 21. 20, 22. 23. Went straight for the tunnel. 24. Are you okay, buddy? Yeah, yes. Is this now 24 or 25? I think 25, but, but I kind of lost it now. Then this one, hopefully 26. And this stubborn one, come on, is 27. And 28. Um, this is, again, I lost it. It's 27 or 28? Or 29? No, it's 29, right? I will go for 29 because it is a higher number. I'm gonna lie. Then this should be 30. <laughs> 31. 32. 33. 34. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, I hit the gold mine <laughs> and that one just rolled away and look I have two so that would be 41, yep, 42, 43, 44, come on will we hit 50, 45, seriously, <laughs> come on dude. There we go. 46, 47, and it looks like that is it. 47 should be the total number, which is pretty good, which is really all right, because I'm not really sure what was the the amount of, of things that we originally rehoused in here, but it was around 50. So 47 is pretty close to 50 and basically no losses that means so there we go pretty decent number and now looking at the enclosure i cannot really see any slings there is one here is another also one booty right there a lot of them went for this tube and also here in these cracks uh, i can see one right there under the leaf you see but basically those are all that i can spot no one could really tell that there is 47 tarantula slings inside of this enclosure and some of them are kind of decent sized like this one you have seen it we have a couple of big ones i'm assuming males but it will be fun to see this enclosure develop with time especially as they grow and hopefully there will be a lot of tunnels ton of tunnels i still need to miss this enclosure because it is pretty dry and you know what i forgot i forgot to add springtails yeah i definitely need springtails in this enclosure because it should be kept slightly moist you know more on the moist side and it should be awesome it should be awesome yeah i am so happy that i did this that i'm finally done with this enclosure and also i ordered uh, led lights that are battery operated 
and I will just put them inside like this. It is a strip light with batteries and that will provide a decent light inside of this enclosure that will enable me to record a good clips here. Yeah, looking forward to that and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe, upload Monday and Friday. So see you again soon. Bye! -bye.